Hello, I'm JW, and it's another video on fuses, but this time it's the cartridge variety. Here's an example from a plug, a 13 amp one here, and of course other ratings are available. The uh, principle is the same though with the fuse wire, this is actually a piece of fuse wire inside there, and just the two metal end caps to make contact with it. And rather than getting out a roll of fuse wire and trying to thread it through the ceramic holder, it's just uh, purchased as a pre-made unit, and just plug that or slot that back into the appropriate place. Now these do have some advantages in that uh, of course it's much easier and quicker to replace and there's far less chance of actually getting the wrong fuse wire or just shoving a hairpin or something in there. Although these are certainly not uh, problem free because they can be abused in various ways. And they also handle a much higher fault level as the uh, miniature explosion is therefore contained inside the cartridge rather than exploding all over the place as we saw in the previous video. Now here's some fairly typical fuses. These are uh, 13 amp fuses that would be used in a plug or a fused uh, connection unit on the wall and uh, made to uh, BS1362 uh, which you may be able to make out on the side there and so these are 13 amps which is the maximum rating of this uh, particular style and also the most common as uh, pretty much every plug ever made is supplied with one of these even though the majority of appliances would typically only have a 3 amp fuse but uh, nevertheless uh, they tend to come with 13s unless you specifically order ones that with different fuses. And uh, these are actually 1 inch long or 25.4 uh, millimetres and a quarter of inch in diameter. And it may be obvious from these but the uh, central part here is actually made not from plastic or something but it's a very hard uh, ceramic material and it's quite actually a thick wall as well and it's designed specifically so that when the uh, fuse wire breaks inside with a sort of miniature explosion it will contain that energy within the uh, body of the fuse and obviously stop it uh, flying apart and spraying molten metal all over the place as we saw with the uh, rewirable fuses in the previous video. And the end caps of course are just metal. Now so those are 13 amp varieties and uh, most other fuses on this range will be threes. Uh, a few things had five, so they're less common now. And uh, here we've got uh, some other ones which are seven amp varieties, which certainly are most uncommon. And uh, the reason we've got these particular seven amp ones is because I've got some other fuses over here, which are also seven amps. And as you can see, these are not made of a hard ceramic material. They're actually made of glass. Now these are normally used for uh, motor vehicles and other such applications typically where the uh, amount of energy involved is going to be substantially smaller. But uh, you can get the general idea of what's uh, inside these. It's simply a glass tube and in there you've got the uh, actual wire element. Notice the ends are very thick and then the actual uh, central piece which is what would melt in the event of a fault is of course very thin and that's uh, exactly equivalent to the fuse wire as we saw in the previous video with the rewirable fuses. Now I've got a few of these because somebody suggested, uh, I don't remember the name but I'll stick it up on the screen there, uh, that uh, it will be interesting to see what would happen uh, if we uh, put various currents through these as compared to the uh, proper ceramic type and whether they would explode. Well uh, I would imagine that they probably will because of course the uh, ceramic is designed to contain the explosion inside whereas of course a thin piece of glass obviously is not and these are not really designed for use on uh, main circuits anyway. So uh, what we'll do is uh, pop outside and we'll uh, use a similar testing setup to we had before with the rewirable types and as I say put various uh, currents through these and see how they fail. Now here's the uh, test arrangement. Uh, basically it's the uh, bottom half of a plug with the fuse in there and uh, the brown wire there just goes to one side of the fuse at the top of the image and the bottom side connects to a pin which goes into the uh, strip of sockets underneath and those have been connected obviously to the other terminal of the supply. So uh, when the power's on of course it will just go directly through the fuse causing it to fail. This is also behind a protective screen hence there will be a few reflections such as that uh, vertical line on the left of the image but uh, that's obviously there to prevent any bits and pieces flying out and causing damage. Now the first fuse we have here is the 7 amp one and it's the ceramic bodied type and I don't really expect a great deal to happen with this one because obviously it's designed to withstand a substantial amount of fault current and in fact far more than we've actually got available here in this test arrangement. So we'll uh, put the 140 amps through this one and see what happens if anything. Well as expected not a great deal to see there. The fuse obviously failed but other than that no actual visual appearances have changed. It looks exactly the same as it did before and of course that's exactly what you expect. These things are of course designed to do that. 
Now here we have a glass fuse, also a 7 amp variety, and in this case you can see the fuse element clearly inside. So we'll start this one at a current of 80 amps, which of course is less than we used before, and see what happens when that is turned on. So you see there, the inside of the glass now is completely blackened, which will be the remains of the vaporised wire, but the fuse hasn't actually broken, it is still intact. Now just replace the fuse with an identical 7 amp variety, and we'll use the 140 amp current this time, and see if that's any different. And once again the insides have gone completely black, but the fuse has remained intact. Now this again is a 7 amp fuse, and uh, this is an 80 amp current, but this is DC rather than the AC we were using before. And again the insides are completely blackened, but uh, the thing has remained in one piece. And again the uh, 7 amp fuse once again, but this is 140 amps DC. You see it's got a bright flash on that one, and the inside, uh, again, is rather blackened, and there are actually some small fractures in the glass casing there, so we'll have a look at that in a bit more detail afterwards. Now here's the fuses in a bit more detail. This is the uh, ceramic variety, and uh, as you can see it's totally undamaged. Uh, you wouldn't even know that uh, the fuse is blown, the only way to confirm that would be actually by testing it. The glass ones, however, have fared less well. Uh, they're all uh, totally blackened and uh, destroyed inside, you can see there the uh, interior is almost totally opaque there, you can't actually see inside anymore, but uh, most of them aren't too bad. I mean this one, uh, so it's reasonably uh, still intact there, as is this one. They've all got various degrees of uh, splattered wire on the inside. And uh, again, that one's uh, very much the same, sort of a whitish deposit on uh, that side and more black on the other. Uh, this particular one, the uh, end has actually come off. So, of course, you can see inside there's uh, nothing left in there, and uh, quite why that uh, particular end came off is uh, not clear, but uh, nevertheless that's certainly a failure. And this is one uh, used right at the end there, which uh, difficult to see, but it does have some actual fractures. There's one there just in the glass itself. So, uh, fairly clearly, if the uh, fault current had been a bit higher, which of course it would be if you were using actual mains voltage, then uh, that would definitely have broken and uh, crumbled to pieces. Now as an added bonus, uh, this device is a socket tester, a pretty old thing, and I've actually done another couple of videos on this uh, a few months ago, I'll put links to those in the description section for this video. And at the end of one of those I actually said that uh, this device would have to be destroyed, because quite frankly it's totally useless as any kind of safety checking device. It uh, only indicates a couple of odd things, and uh, even then it certainly can't be relied on to give you the accurate result. So I'll uh, just shove this on here, and I've made a couple of changes to the wiring so that the uh, current now goes through the both pins of the device. And again, this is the AC with the 140 amps shoving in there. So that's the end of that, it clearly isn't going to be working anymore. Now just for no reason at all, this is the uh, same device after being ruined, and I've just turned it upside down and uh, filled it up with some salt water in an attempt to destroy it even further. And unfortunately this is one of those things that does not go according to plan, as we shall see. And this is the 140 amps DC, let's see what happens. Now unfortunately what happened there was that the uh, rectifier unit, uh, one of the capacitors blew out, hence the smoke billowing up, and the uh, device there under test uh, wasn't actually affected at all. So uh, looks like the rectifier will have to be repaired, and until next time, thanks for watching.